Before I get started on my 2018 hurricane season landfall projections, let me show you what happened last year. This is a screenshot from my predictions page from last May showing all of my cities and islands chosen from the Hurricane City database of 140 locations. I narrow it down to 20. The areas highlighted in yellow were impacted last year. This makes 13 out of 15 years where at least two or three of my top five have been impacted on average. Here is the map I drew up last May before the season started showing potential tracks in white and red is what ended up happening. Here are the majority of my top 20 embedded on top of the official post analysis wind swaths.
here is my breakdown chart of my top 20. Notice the eight criteria at the top, but how do I arrive at my top 20? I go through all of the 140 locations in the Hurricane City database and choose them based on seasons since 1990. How often do they get affected by a named storm when there's 11 to 13 named storms? And then for hurricanes, I go all the way back to 1900, figuring which areas get hit when there's 11 to 13 named storms. The other factor is whether these cities and islands are either statistically due or overdue for a named storm or hurricane. The chosen top 20 are then placed in alphabetical order on the left-hand column, and then the calculations begin to figure out who has the most wins in each criteria, which are shaded in yellow. As you can see here, Sable Island, Nova Scotia has the most shaded boxes out of the eight criteria and is number one. While I have this chart up, I just want to emphasize that this is not all about return rates as six of my top 20 were impacted last year. What's interesting is my number three pick from last year, Marathon, Florida, was impacted eight times since 1990 when there was a projected positive North Atlantic oscillation. This year, Antigua wins this category with eight as well. Now, Antigua didn't crack my top five, but if I lived there, I'd be very concerned considering the track record from last year was very accurate in reference to the NAO. The whole Northeastern Caribbean last year was hammered by hurricanes. Not saying that's going to happen again this year, but it could be a tropical storm or maybe a weaker hurricane. We'll see. Last year's sea surface temperatures were warmer than normal out there. This year, they're starting off cooler than normal, so we'll see. Now, I do this for fun, but as far as tracks are concerned, my biggest concerns here are for the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast. If it's a busier season, we could see more activity further north and in the northern gulf. If it's less busy, we could see Texas have a higher landfall probability, southwest Caribbean Sea. But look, it's really hard to say exactly where hurricanes and tropical storms are going to make landfall. If any, we could have a season this year where there are no hurricane landfalls. It could be relatively busy and we could have no landfalling hurricanes. It could also be very slow and we could end up with a couple of hurricane landfalls and they could be major. So everybody needs to be on guard regardless of what you see in this video and what my predictions are calling for, even though they've been very good over the years. There are going to be areas that are hit that I do not predict, such as the north coast of Cuba with Hurricane Irma last year and Great Inagua, Bahamas. So everybody needs to prepare equally as though you're going to be hit by a hurricane this year. Good luck, everybody, and we'll see you during the season with updates.